Okay, I have 6.30. We have, uh, we'll call the meeting to order uh, for the City Council. City of Hillsboro is now in session. And uh, first item up will be our approval of consent agenda. First is uh, minutes from our 12-16-2021 meeting. Did everyone receive copies of minutes? Were there any questions or corrections or comments regarding the minutes? Now, do we take one vote? Yeah, or? one vote will do. Okay, all. so then we'll move on to vouchers. Did everyone receive copies of the vouchers? Were there any questions regarding the vouchers? All right. And then we actually have two appointments to consider this, this tonight. Uh, we have, uh, as, as advertised, David Stevens to the museum board, and we're also adding Darren Franz for consideration to the museum board. So if, uh, if there are no questions or corrections to any of those things, I would accept a motion that we approve the consent agenda as submitted. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman McCarty, a second by Councilman Driggers. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Uh, we'll now move into uh, item C, which is our uh, um, public comment section, Mr. Stiles. So we have a few people in the room. I don't know if anyone wants to make any public comment. You're welcome to. I think, I think that's a no. <laughs> Uh, we also have uh, Blake's on there, but I don't, I don't know that he's having problems with his audio anyway, so I'm not sure that he can chime in. So, okay. All right. We'll now move into our business section. And again, before we do that, I want to welcome you guys and, and appreciate you being here. Extra credit or not, it's always good to see you guys. And, and uh, hopefully this gives you a chance to see what goes on in a council meeting and Someday uh, you can be sitting in this chair and we'll let you run the meeting, all right? <laughs> uh, first item up is Ordinance 1338, adopting the 2021 code set. Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. So uh, uh, Ordinance 1338 will adopt the uh, International Building Code, Residential Code, the National Electric Code, International Plumbing Code. International Mechanical Code, Property Maintenance Code, and Fire Code, as, as we've discussed previously. Uh, the three exceptions that we pulled out of there are removing the peer review for the ICC, that's for the storm shelters, uh, which we determined was pretty redundant and unnecessary. Uh, we also pulled the International in Energy Conservation Code, or the Green Building Code, out of there. Um, and then we also require, uh, we change the language for internal building attendance for emergency responders, uh, which gives the building dis inspector discretion on new construction, which is essentially how we do the policy now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And uh, Ben is here if you want to ask any specific questions about anything or if you had any follow up questions about the code sets. Um, if not, uh, we would ask for approval today. Um, one thing I would note is that. The new code set will um, positively impact our ISO, which is uh, the fire fire rating for insurance that some insurance companies use. Uh, and we have a meeting with ISO on Friday. Friday. Right. Um, so no pressure, but it would help if this was passed in, on that rating system. So um, we're asking for approval today. Any questions? Comments? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve Ordinance 1338, adopting the 2021 code set with the identified uh, uh, exceptions and authorize the mayor to sign. I'll make a motion. Councilman McCarty moves. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Lowen seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll poll the council. And uh, for, uh, for those visitors on ordinances, we poll, we take a poll vote instead of a voice vote. What we did before when we approved the consent agenda was called a voice vote. Now we're going to ask each individual council member for their vote and uh, we will start that now. Councilman Gehring? Yes. Councilman McCarty? Yes. Councilman Lowen? Yes. Councilman Driggers? Yes. 
Okay, Ordinance 1338 is adopted as described and the mayor will sign. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Stiles, next item up is employee cost of living adjustment for 2022. Yes, sir. Thank you. So during our 22 budget process, we uh, included in, in the process, the adopted budget, a 2% cost of living adjustment, which at the time was what the consumer price index was. Um, so that's all in there. But as part of the process, we asked the, the council adopt that in order to put that into motion. And if you were to choose to adopt that today, it would actually start effect on the 26th of December because of how payrolls fall. Um, and so that would be the first pay. Well, it ended up being the payroll January 13th, which is the first payroll in January. Um, what we would suggest for this and how, how it was budgeted in was for full time and regular part time people. So uh, we do have two regular part time people, uh, Heather in the office and then Sue at the museum. Um, and so they will be included in this as well. It doesn't include any of the seasonal help uh, or the part time help. So um, that's who it would include. I would note that. Uh, it's a 2% is kind of what we approved in the budget, and that's what we're recommending. Uh, I would say that the actual CPI has jumped up to 6% um, since then. So, you know, it's something to keep into keep in the back of your head when we talk about the next year's budget. Of course, we're, we're kind of in a handicap when we do budgeting because we're you know, six months behind before we actually do anything. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're actually, when we talk about actual inflation, it's at some, sitting at 6% instead of the 2 but. Uh, there's really not much we can do about that for this year's budget, but we can maybe address it in 23 uh, if you want to look at it that way. So that is what we're proposing, 2% to be factored in. Um, it's about $26,000. It's already in the, into, the, um, into the budget for 22. So uh, we're just approving that and making it uh, applicable on the 26th of December. Okay, any questions? Comments? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve a 2% cost of living adjustment for all full-time and regular part-time employees to be applied starting December 26, 2021. So moved. Councilman Driggers moves. Is there a second? No second. Councilman McCarty seconds. Any further discussion? <laughs> I'd like in the future for us to think about raising that more. If, if that's what the cost of living index is in the future. It'll be interesting to see if it stays at 6% for the whole year too. Yeah. That'll mean yeah, that'll yeah, that would, yeah, if it's not jumping around too right. much, yeah. Hopefully. So I'd like Inflation to- Inflation will go down. Right. Hopefully. Well, it'll yeah. at least curb, yeah. But mm -hmm. I can't see us keeping it too low if we, <clears throat> I'm afraid we'd lose people. Mm -hmm. We keep it too low. That's just my- perspective on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate that, you know, and, and again, the challenge, the challenge that we've got is, you know, sit in setting a budget under our budget requirements. Well, I'm you know, not asking for change this year, I just think. No, I get it. No, I understand, you know, but uh, I'm not sure, you know, how you, how you tie it to anything that, that you can't uh, put a, put a solid figure to. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that would be allowed in our budgeting process. Uh, you basically have to figure it in as extra or, or kind of a contingency. Um, it almost feels to me like you're just a year behind all the time, six months yeah, behind. Pretty much. You're at least six months behind. Right. Time. So when the CPI numbers that you can evaluate for the next budget come out, it, mm -hmm. your, your actual CPI may be lower when you're doing something a little higher to catch back up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that um, I'm just, the, the, I, I agree with you, uh, Councilman mm -hmm. Lowen. We need to, uh, we need to be cognizant of, of it, yeah. where our where our employees are at, and and uh, we definitely want to make sure that we're taking good care of them, mm -hmm. because uh, we all know the challenge that it's that we're all dealing with and finding finding good employees. So keeping good employees is an imperative. That's so. an imperative. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the uh, approving the 2% cost of living adjustment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Stiles, we're now moving on to our 2021 budget reconciliation amendment. Yeah, pretty much. 
Uh, thank you, sir. So what we're going to be looking at uh, for the budget amendment here, uh, we have three funds that we need to address. The sewer fund, um, we're actually increasing the expenditure amount in the sewer fund uh, to accommodate the lagoon projects. Um, so that that wasn't part of the, uh, the budget year when we decided to do that. Uh, was something we needed to do. So that actually is increasing that budget amount from um, 801, 801,325 to $1,016,795 uh, for the year. And that again is just almost solely related to that. Uh, the TIF uh, fund, we need to increase that. The expenditure amount there, we actually had some additional costs tied to that. It was an issuance cost and a um, um, basically a, a, a with Ben's radio. Uh, you mean to leave it? I don't know if you did or not. I doubt it. He'll find out in a second. <laughs> Here, you want to take um, it to him? Thanks. It's uh, some some costs associated with the issuance there uh, and, and maintenance of that fund. So that's the TIF. And then the water fund, we're actually reducing the amount uh, of expenditure there, but we're rearranging some of the expenditure and we changed uh, down downshifted the water uh, revenue side of it too, because we had a rate adjustment planned in there and we haven't done that this year. So we're gonna look at it for next year. Um, and then we also had some some chemical costs that went up and we basically ended up re reallocating some things internally on that fund to, to accommodate some of that. So um, that is how that ended up going. It went from one or $1,125,084 to $1,089,519. So actually adjusting it down, but uh, again, reallocating some of those costs. So um, that are those are the proposed budget amendments for this year. Uh, everything else is looking pretty good. I didn't feel like we needed to make any more adjustments than any other funds. Um, so I think we're in good shape there. Uh, in order to meet the publication deadlines for this, it'll go into the newspaper next week. Uh, so next Wednesday, and that would put us, we have to have 10 days before we can hear, uh, have the hearing and, and approve it. So that's going to have to require a special meeting, which I tentatively put on there for the 28th, uh, which is the week after Christmas, uh, back on a Tuesday. And I didn't know Councilman Lowen if you had um, basketball practice during that time. I didn't think so. No, I don't. Okay. So we set it at four o'clock, which is kind of a normal time, uh, or proposed to set it at four o'clock if you would be willing to do that. So. Um, do you have any questions about the proposed budget amendments? Is that, that balance out all right? Yeah, it'll balance fine. Uh, we'll see a little bit of a, you know, what, what with the sewer one, you know, we have the um, ARPA money that we're planning on using for part of this project too. And what we'll do is reallocate that in 22, uh, yeah, 22. We're not dipping into any reserves. No. Well, it does right now dip that cash. It does right. Yeah, it basically creates a cash flow issue for that. I mean, it will reduce it a little bit now, um, but we will we'll make up for that when we go into the next budget year. Sounds good. Okay, so we need a uh, a motion uh, to set the budget hearing. Mm -hmm. Does somebody care to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, for December, Tuesday, December 28 at 4 p.m. in the council chambers for the purpose of conducting a budget amendment hearing. We have a motion by Councilman Lowen. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Gehring seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Looks like we have a couple uh, Elcon invoices to consider, Mr. Stiles. Yes, sir. Thank you. So the first one is for the wastewater lagoon project, um, the outbound lift station. We had some work there, uh, totaling two hundred twenty-one dollars and eighty-eight cents. And then we had some supply restock stuff for the street department, uh, which was one hundred ninety-four dollars and twenty-nine cents, for a grand total of four hundred and thirty-two dollars and sixty-eight cents. And again, for our guests, you may you may have wondered why we're approving paying Elcon invoices separately from our other bills. Well, as it happens, we have a council member who's associated with Elcon um, services, and so this gives Councilman Gehring uh, an opportunity to abstain from. Uh, even though she actually is not required by law in this case because it's not. I find she's not voting herself a financial benefit because the city receives services in kind. It 
it it just makes her more comfortable. Is that is that fair to say, Renee? In in uh, in, in terms of transparency, Remo yeah, removes any removes doubt. any doubt. Okay, <laughs> so that's why we have this separated, and I guess we won't need to next year, huh? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Unless, unless, unless Mr. Mr. Bai is somehow associated with Elcon, <laughs> I'm not aware of. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, approve payment of the Elcon invoices totaling four hundred and thirty-two dollars sixty-eight cents? Oh my God, motion. Councilman McCarty moves. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Lowen seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those abstaining. Abstain. All those opposed. Okay, motion carries. Invoices are approved for payment. And now we're into our future consideration section. Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. So uh, the pool needs to be recoded. It has to be done about every seven to eight years. And we're right at that seven year mark uh, in the pool coding. Uh, what we have budgeted in 2022 is $125,000 for capital improvements, thinking that we're gonna have to do at least this this coming year. Um, we've solicited uh, two bids and we've gotten the Tory Brothers bid back, which is the one that you've got attached here. Uh, there's some good things involved with that one. It has a three year warranty, which is kind of unique for pool coating. Um, and then it, uh, you know, kind of have the specs on all that stuff there. So they would strip it down, repair the spots that need to be, clean it up, repo, uh, re epoxy it, and then coat it, two coats. Um, there's no action to be done at this point because we're still waiting for the second bid to come in. We have somebody look at it that the company that actually built the pool uh, is going to be quoting us for that. We requested a bid back from them and we haven't gotten it yet. Um, if we don't see that by the next meeting, we'll probably just recommend going forward with Tory Brothers. They become highly recommended for McPherson, Salina, and a lot of other pools. So uh, I think they're going to do a great job. It's just I always feel uncomfortable saying this is the bid when we, you know, we're spending almost $35,000 and we really ought to have multiple bids for that. So uh, we're hoping to get a second bid in. If we don't, uh, then we'll move forward with proposing that, just that bid from Tory Brothers. But uh, do you have any questions about the pool coding process or any of that? The idea is to get it done uh, early enough in the season that will affect our opening. Um, it needs, I think, two months or, I don't know, excuse me, one month to cure after they get the second coat on. So. We have to give it some time. And so it's it's important that we get it into the schedule early enough in the year that we don't impact our opening. Well, hopefully that'll be in April. Yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah, we'll see how it goes and get it all, get it all in there and, and ready to go for Memorial Day. So in terms of any other items, I know last year we had an issue with an electrical motor. And uh, did we go ahead and purchase that that other backup motor? Uh, we pulled the two motors that were in there and had them rebuilt. They're actually getting rebuilt. So. Okay, but we never, so we never did order a new motor. We haven't ordered a new one. No, we never okay. bought the new one because it was astronomically expensive. So okay. we just, we've we're chosen, we've chosen to rebuild the two we've got. So well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Any, um, any other questions regarding that? Okay. We'll now move on to your, uh, uh, City Administrator's report, Mr. Stiles. Sure, so we've got the senior class presentations. I wanted to kind of mention those. Uh, of course, we've got some senior representatives here. Uh, I don't. They don't seem to be talkative about what they presented on, but at some point in the future, they may be uh, Im implored to, to do that. Uh, we had uh, two, you know, we had 10 presentations total, uh, a lot of different things to talk about. Uh, we had two focused on the ponds, uh, two talking about lighting on the trail, uh, the walking trail amenities out there. There was a dog park proposal, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, driving range proposal at the golf course to improve that. Uh, improving the fairgrounds arena seating, which really isn't a city project, but still something that needs to be considered. Uh, improving the park shelters, which I think is a, a really uh, a good thing and probably a good investment. And then also adding a miniature golf course, which to me sounds like a business class project or a, a, an investment for a business. But uh, still, still would be a great amenity to add to, to the uh, town. So uh, Mr. Canole and I are kind of talking about how this is going to move forward. And we'll hopefully have, have some of them come and present to you all so that you can take into consideration some of that. Of course, we still have some from last year that we've got kind of percolating too. So 
Uh, we did put a chunk of money in the general fund to do some community improvement projects. So there's an opportunity to fund some of these. And of course, our outstanding seniors have also thought through ways in which they can fund that without all 100% all city help. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes and how it progresses. And I think they, they did an outstanding job. And I think every year that they've done this, it's gotten better. And I, it does. I think the mayor can probably attest to that having seen them all. So um, really good. I always enjoy it. I think it's a fun fun opportunity and I'm, I'm glad we were able to sort of adjust the timeline to, to get it in a little earlier this year. So now just time to time for us to they've put up so it's time for us to put up so i'm excited to actually do some of these you know yeah one time hillsborough had a miniature golf course here in town that's did you yeah. hear about, did you so know? i've been told yeah they had a go uh go-kart track dude and go-kart track see yeah that I sounds like a great business opportunity thing. Yeah. Yeah. Had a lot of stuff here all run away <laughs> So, like, when did we get, well, whose idea was it to get rid of this? You guys weren't even around. I, I wasn't either. It was before my I time. I was pretty young. <laughs> I remember those things. The so, 60s happened, you know? Yeah. Things are different. Um, policing meeting. We had a meeting with uh, Tabor to introduce Chief Hebert and, and the mayor and I. Uh, met with them as well and they just talk about kind of how we can partner together and improve student relations and that was a really really productive conversation i expect that um, once we were full staffed with with the police department and chief hubert isn't pulling road shifts that we can have some really good positive interactions i really feel i felt i felt pretty good leaving that meeting i think we're going to have a really positive uh, momentum moving forward with that uh, replat of the Groves Edition, which is on Third Street. There, we've been talking with some of the interest in doing some entry level housing, um, and they're working with EBH. And we're talking with—we actually met with them yesterday about uh, maybe replatting those lots and making them smaller uh, in order to accommodate some more uh, specific type of home there. Um, they're really going through the costs, and anytime you do affordable housing, you really have to put a pencil to it because it's that every every dollar counts. Um, and of course, with those lots up there, there's some issues with specials too that are going to have to be reassessed. And so there's some costs involved with that as well. So uh, we were just talking with them their exploratory stage. I think they've got some, some interest in moving that project forward. And once we get more details, we'll, we'll fill you in on it. Uh, water plant lagoon. So you may or may not know that we have lagoons at the water plant too, not just the wastewater plant. Um, and we hold water there once we do backwashing and, and filter cleaning. Uh, we've got uh, an, an agreement with the adjacent property owner and farmer, Kevin Winter. Um, and we really, we don't discharge into the field unless it's an overflow situation, high water. Um, and we really haven't been, but what we found out when he went to cut his Milo was that there's water in the field. It has been coming from somewhere because it hasn't been raining. Um, and so we think we've got a leaky valve issue there. Um, there's two valves on the outside where it can go either to the sanitary sewer or it can go out to the field. Both were shut, so we're concerned that we maybe have a leaking valve or an unseated valve or something out there. So we're going to do a little exploratory digging to try to figure that out. But um, he was upset about that. Obviously, I would be too. We had a hard time cutting the Milo. So I uh, just want to let you know that it happened and we're, we're working on fixing that. Uh, our October KPP bill is attached there. Um, it came out just after our last meeting, so we didn't have a chance to really look at that. Um, so just keeping track of the, the February 21 winter storm URI surcharge that's been in place. Um, we've been charged $204,000 uh, and haven't collected. We're about $70,000 behind on that uh, because of the delay from when we got charged from when we could put the surcharge on. So. Uh, sales tax also attached there for October. Collections were down compared to where they have been, um, which was the, the previous month was about 13,000 more, but we're still 2% ahead of last year's numbers, which was a record year. Um, and so if you look at the collections year to year, we're 19% above last year and 28% uh, above a five, the five-year average. So it's still, while it is down this last month, it's still hanging in there and doing pretty well. So I feel pretty good about that. Um, that is all I have today, sir. Okay. Any questions? I would say uh, I would also add, uh, commenting on the uh, on the meeting with Tabor, that it's also wasn't just completely focused on policing concerns. It's it's really about uh, how we as a community can do a better job. I think of of integrating 
with Tabor students. You know, we don't, as I, as I, as we conversed and we talked about, uh, about a number of things, uh, I realized, you know, we, the city really doesn't do much in terms of welcoming Tabor students to town. And, you know, we recognize the importance of Tabor College, the Tabor students, the people that are employed at Tabor College and, and the economic impact of, that Tabor College has. And, and not just an economic impact, but also a cultural impact that they have in our community. And, and so I think we're gonna be looking at some things in the future about how we do a better job of making sure that Tabor students realize that they're welcome to step off campus and, uh, and, uh, and uh, enter the community and, and feel free to do that and feel welcome to do that. So, you know, we'll be talking about those things uh, um, and just uh, for, for these guys over here, one of the conversations that came up that was brought up is, hey, we need a paintball uh, course here in town. And so, uh, you know. What do you guys think? I take it. I take it. Golf carts. <laughs> you know, mini golf, paintball. Yeah. Bring back the mini golf and go. Got to go cars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You say paintball? Paintball, you mm -hmm. know. I might have to go to yeah, I know about them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still got some guns left. So, uh, but anyway, it was a good meeting and, uh, and you know, there's, and for those of you that don't know, Tabor has a criminal justice program and uh, they have a, a, an officer from which the Wichita Police Department that comes up and, and assist them in that, in that program. And, and uh, we're going to do a better job too, in terms of uh, being supportive of that with our own police department, which only makes sense. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we ought to be linked. We ought to, our arms ought to be linked solidly with them on that. So that, uh, and, and the goal is to, to, uh, to make connections, you know, without the, uh, without the rollers uh, lighting up the sky, you know, we want students to, 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 to know who we are as a community and who our officers are too. I think it's important. Okay. Well, we're on to our second public comment. Have we added anybody to the mix? Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody okay. new. Then we'll move on to council comments. Councilman Gehring, any comments? No, none today. Councilman McCarty? None. Councilman Lowen? None. Councilman Driggers? No. Okay. Well, if, is there any other business that needs to come before the city council? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned. You guys chose a good one. It was a quick one, half an hour. Ready for the heated arguments. <laughs> yeah.